Good afternoon, St. Mary Magdalene. This is Miguel Soto once again. Good to see you all once again this Friday. I am here at Nazareth House Seminary as I spoke last week about propedeutic formation and how the seminary here, Nazareth House, focuses on preparing seminarians for the further phases of formation. So I brought you here so you can have an exclusive look, look inside of Nazareth House. Alrighty, St. Mary Magdalene. So we're here inside the Nazareth House, the first room that you're gonna enter when you come here to Nazareth House is the foyer. So here we receive most of our guests, about all of them, but I just gotta let you know, as I said last week, Mondays was formation night, so we have guests come over to help us be built at any of the four stages of formation, intellectual, human, spiritual, or pastoral. Tuesday nights we usually have guests from all around the diocese to get to know us and we get to know them. We just come over for a little bit of dinner and so this is our room where we accept them. This is known as the foyer and now we're going to go over here to my left, your guys' right, over to the parlor room. So if you're going to follow me, we're going to go over here to the left here. Alrighty, St. Mary Mag, this is known as the parlor room. So usually when we have any formation meetings, so seminarian will meet with the priest that's going to form him and they'll meet here and not only do we have these great priests to help form us we also have a counselor that comes and helps us to grow our awareness of ourselves and help us to grow just generally in the aspects of human formation and so we'll meet here usually and if father has any important meetings that he needs to do he'll usually come here to the parlor to do that so we're going to go over now to the chapel and check it out. Alright, St. Mary Magdalene, now we are in the chapel of Nazareth House. I just wanted to point a little detail out here on the altar. Since, as we know, the three main people that grew in Nazareth, that have, we have two people that helped raise Jesus and Jesus himself. On our altar, you can't really see very well because of this little cloth. We'll just raise it a little bit here. And so we have the image of the three hearts, the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the most chaste heart, St. Joseph. So Nazareth House has been formed to help us grow like the family of Nazareth grew, together in unity and community. But a little known fact about our altar, it was consecrated last year in November, and so Bishop came over and celebrated the commemoration of the altar. It has a relic inside of St. Francis Xavier Silos, who was a saint of the Americas who actually died during the pandemic, during the Spanish flu pandemic. So in commemoration of what happened in those times during their pandemic, Bishop Holmes did, thought it would be best to have a saint to help us during these times of our coronavirus pandemic. As you can see, some of these pews here, some are darker than the others, but that's because Nazareth House has had a project going on since about two months ago. As you all know, the cathedral is having their renovations, and Father Camus used to be one of the formators here. So when he was moved as rector of the cathedral, he was able to let us have some of his pews. And so the seminarians here, along with Father Paul, myself, before I moved over with you guys, had these entire pews that filled this entire room. We would have to pick them up and take them out of this chapel and cut them down to size. So we've been cutting down these pews, sanding them, and I left before we could start the staining process. So as you can see now, we have about three pews here that are done. They've been sanded, they've been cut, they've been stained. Also here in the sanctuary, we have the presider's chair done as well. So we were able to cut one of the pews and able to turn them into a presider's chair for this chapel so that everything can match. But so far, still in the works, we still have at least three pews that we need to stain, but by the grace of God, we'll have that all done. So now we're going to head over through this door here, which is going to lead us to the sacristy. So I'm going to show you guys a little bit about the sacristy over here. Alrighty, St. Mary Mac, now we're here in the vestry. The Father and the seminarians, every week they have Mass and Holy Hour. First, they will have their adoration time at 6.30, and that concludes at 7.30, which leads into Mass. So seminarians and priests that will be serving Holy Hour and Mass will come here and vest. 
So if you guys want to take a look here, we have some of Father's vestments here. So we have some of their veils. We also have some chasubles here, some alps for you guys to look at. Move over here. We have some more vestments. This is usually where the seminarian will put his vestments. Yeah, there's some chasubles in here, but usually, as you can see, there's some cassocks, there's some surpluses here. And the seminarian will usually vest over here with Father as well to get ready for Mass. So now we're going to look over here to the rest of the sacristy. We all actually have a collection of relics. This was recently added. I used to be sacristan for the past semester here at Nazareth House, but we've added a board here to organize our relics better. So we have certain relics here. So we have St. Margaret the Virgin, Alphonse de Liguori, another one of Alphonse's de Liguori, St. Pius, St. Margaret Mary Aloque, and then Pope Sylvester. So we have various different relics here of the saints. But as I stated before, this is one of our newer additions. So we usually have Whoever is in charge of the sacristy will be working here for the week or for the semester, depending on which job he has. So we're going to go over through this door right here and lead into what was once the living room, but it's now been the project room, and I'll explain in depth about that. Alrighty, St. Mary Mag, now we're here in the living room. The living room here at Nazareth House. As you can see here, this is known as the game room. The shape of it right now, if we look over here to the cameraman's right, the living room is in this interesting L shape. So over in the corner used to be the little study area. We have specifically a study room, but most guys would like to go over here and study over there in that corner. It's a pretty comfy and quiet corner. But usually down here in this room, we have board games or we'll watch a movie, I know it doesn't look like a TV, but that's a poster that's hiding a television. Here in Nazareth House, television time is usually a communal thing, it's not individual. So it's all about building fraternity, and so you really can't build fraternity by yourself. But, as you can see right now, if we look actually down, we have some cardboard and some paper and tape laid out because, as I stated in the chapel, the seminarians are working on staining the pews. And so Father Paul, along with the rest of the seminarians, have been doing a lot of their cutting, a lot of their sanding, a lot of their trimming here in this room. And so I'm actually looking forward to see the chapel fully completed with all the pews stained, cut, and sand down. So right now, this is what they're using in the living room. They still have fraternity nights, and they still go out and they hang out. But usually when we're not working on projects as large as these, this is our living room slash fraternity room where we'll do all of our all of our fraternal events on Wednesday nights. Alright, St. Mary Mag, so we are leaving the living room slash project room currently. Now we're heading up to the second floor of Nazareth House, where I want to point out a slight little detail, mainly because we don't usually have guests here in the second floor, but Father Paul's given us permission to record a little bit of what happens here at the second floor. So we have here all of our rooms, but what I want to pay attention, bring to your attention, is if you look here at the ceiling, I can stretch my hand out here, touch the wall, you would think, okay, that's nice. But if I move past this little rip, this little door, my door, my hand can't touch the roof as high as this one. Well, that's because where we are currently at is all of the newer section of Nazareth House. Previously, when this convent belonged to some sisters, when we got up to here, this is as far as the rooms went. But because we want to have more seminarians, God willing, more priests here in this house, well, we need to make more room and add extra rooms here. So this entire section, this entire small part of the hall past this door is all new. Is all the newer room in the new hall. So over here is all part of the old building that was once the convent. And so now I'm just going to show you two more rooms here. So first I'm going to show you guys the study hall. As I stated before downstairs we have the living room and it has a little corner that some guys like to go study. But we have a hall specifically for studying. A little room right here. Not that big but some guys like to have some quiet time to themselves 
or sometimes if guys want to get together and just have a small little chat, they'll go over here into the little study room and study together or just have some quality time in priestly fraternity. And lastly, we're going to go down here on the hall. As I explained, the four aspects of priestly formation in its dimensions is human, intellectual, pastoral, and spiritual. And so sometimes guys are sent out to different parishes for spiritual formation, but every so often we'll have a priest who would like to come over and help form that guy, or on Tuesdays and usually Thursdays, depending on what day the priest is available, we'll actually have confession in here, the spiritual direction room. And so as you can see here, it's not that big of a room, but usually most of our spiritual direction happens here if a priest comes over, or if a priest comes over for weekly confession, it'll usually be done here in this room. So we still have access to confession, like all of you, it's just that our formation has an internal form and an external form, meaning we have priests in charge of human formation, pastoral and intellectual, helping us on our personhood, who we are to help us grow in men of Christ, and the spiritual director, since that's a little separate side of formation, still helps us and it still works all together, but the spiritual director has that more has more liberty to be help the seminarian get in touch with the Lord in the spiritual realm. And so since it's a little deeper in the levels of formation, we have a song, we have a room set aside just for spiritual formation, and that's here in this room. Alright, St. Mary Mag, now we're leaving the second floor and we're going to move on to the last two rooms of the Nazareth house here that I have not gone over. So currently, we are in the dining room slash kitchen. As you can see, we have one of our seminarians here, Nathan Blanchard, who is a seminarian up from North and Flagstaff, where Father Wintering is currently assigned. And he seems to be cooking something. So Nathan, what are you, what are you making for the guys tonight? Making a chicken pot pie. Chicken pot pie. So how does it usually work here when it comes to cooking, Nathan? Is it just you cooking all summer long, or? You guys take turns, or how does it usually work? Um, we're, we typically work it out at the beginning of the week at the house meeting. Um, everyone, someone takes a night uh, each night, and so Wednesday I, I is my night this week. So. so as you can see, like I stated last week, how we have to have that aspect of human formation. Well, you don't want your priest to grow up being a guy who doesn't know how to cook or clean. So here in Nazareth House, we're helping guys learn how to cook or clean by the grace of God. Nathan learned how to cook and clean before coming to Nazareth House, but some guys might struggle with that, but we're here to grow in formation, and so even if the guy cooks burnt macaroni, burnt macaroni like, it's okay. Just shakes it off and he moves on. So we have here, as I stated, the dining room. Usually Sunday nights, which I failed to mention last week, but Sunday nights, seminarians will come back and we'll have what's called a formation meeting, a house meeting, and so they'll go over what their week is going to look like, and then after that, straight into night prayer, which is the final prayer of the night. And after that, silent hours, grand silence is observed. So nobody says anything. You kind of just take this time to calm down and just be with the Lord and just rest in the Lord. So we're going to go over here to the kitchen, which was donated to Nazareth House by some patrons of the Diocese of Phoenix. You can see here our kitchen. By the grace of God, we have everything that we need. We have a guy in charge of cooking. We have a guy who actually puts orders in so that we can get food. So the guys at Nazareth House definitely do not go hungry, as Father Paul would say. So we're gonna go over to this last room over here, which is the laundry, but it's also the gym. We're currently working on expanding our gym facilities. As you can see, this room is not that big, but we make we make use of what we got. So we're gonna just head out here for the backyard of Nazareth House. So we'll explain a little bit of what it was like, and then we'll conclude our tour of the Nazareth House. We are at the conclusion of our tour, so we are in the backyard of Nazareth House. 
As you can see over here, it's quite a spacious area. The seminarian since its conception have been working on this backyard previously. The backyard was not in the best of, of shape, but we have some seminarians who are in charge of mowing the yard and making sure that everything's okay. But now it's actually a vibrant green. But what usually happens back here is when we have a large amount of guests, we'll actually come out here and have dinner. You can see over here to your guys' is right, directly in front of me, we have a grill. Every Tuesday, every third Tuesday of the month, or first Tuesday, I cannot recall. Uh, Jared, do you remember what, what Tuesday of the month is discerned or not? Every first Tuesday. Every first Tuesday of the month, we have guys all over the diocese who are interested in discerning the priesthood. We're usually looking for guys that are around junior year of high school to senior year, even guys that are in college and just feel the call of the Lord and they want to serve and they want to find out how. Well, they usually come and we open this invitation every first Tuesday of the month. We come here, we gather in fraternity, we'll pray together and then we'll have dinner out here so that those guys can know what it's like to live with the community of brothers and they'll be like, oh, well, like, I, I want to be able to experience such a thing, be able to have an encounter with the Lord through my brothers. And so it's just a great opportunity for priestly fraternity, seminarian fraternity, and just fraternity in general. Now I'm going to let you guys go, God willing. I'll see you all at Mass, Sunday Mass. So you guys take care and God bless you all. Why St. Mary Mag?